What is going on guys? I hope your day has been wonderful. Today we're going to be covering update 3 and more specifically how it relates to snipers. Anyways, let's jump right into the video. First I want to go over update 3 and what it all entails. I'm not going to go too in depth just because so many videos have already been made. But on the rendering side, they've addressed a variety of visual flickering and stuttering issues. Personally, I didn't have any prior to the update, but after I have had a couple. They have made improvements to artifacts affecting DLSS implementation, which is huge. The game does feel like it runs a lot smoother for me and just overall a lot cleaner. And also improvements to water rendering when aiming down sights. I haven't noticed anything, but the more I kind of looked at some of my older videos and kind of compared it to now, I have noticed a few things, so that is pretty nice. Um, if you do want to look at all these, you can pause the video. They're attacking one of our objectives. All right, and on to progression and unlocks. They have introduced a weekly missions, which is really Battlefield. I haven't found where to see that at all, so I'm not sure if it's in the game yet. They have improved overall XP slash rank tracking and reliability, which is nice. Um, especially the improved mastery rank tracking. I know that some games, it doesn't seem like my kills have counted for my snipers because that's primarily what I've been using so far. And then a lot of these other ones are just small things. Most of them didn't happen to me or at least noticeably. So if you do want to check these out, like I said, you can pause. All right, and then onto the HUD section. This one's huge because Battlefield's HUD was kind of iffy. So they've added a UI element that shows when nearby players that can revive you are within 50 meters. That is really Battlefield, and it's kind of weird that that wasn't in the game just to begin with. And of course, along with that is when somebody pings, they are an incoming medic. And another thing that caught my attention was a message about which player has healed you or given you ammo. And I think seeing this just makes the game feel a little more like a team game rather than a solo game. And then before we move on to the NTW50 specifically, I have noticed that pings when you're down show up because previously they wouldn't show up for teammates because it's only for your squad members. I do believe there would be pings everywhere if not. So that's actually really good because a lot of times you're trying to ping if there's an enemy around a corner for them not to revive you or kill this person before they do. So I think that is huge being fixed. And just overall this game looks a lot better. I'm maintaining the same frames which is about 90 on a 2070 Super and a Ryzen 9 3600X. Um, I do have a video on how to make the game run better, get more frames which will be above. But I think I'm going to make an updated one just to show how to clean your computer and set everything up to be optimized for performance. Alright, and on to the weapons. So along with some other changes like to the M44 as you can see and the 40mm projectile no longer incorrectly shows as a proximity indicator, which is weird. They have changed the 8x scope. It doesn't have as fast of an ADS. Before it was the fastest ADS out of any of the scopes, which was weird because it's an 8x and you'd think the 6x would be faster. Personally, this isn't huge for me as I did find myself more often using the six times. I like a cleaner scope rather than something that has the range markers on it. So that one for me is not that crazy. And a couple other things you can see they fixed is an exploit that allowed to have unlimited ammo and rapid fire grenades from the 40 millimeter underbarrel attachments. I did die by this a lot. Kind of annoying. I felt like it was either vehicles or that for the most part. But other than that, another huge thing is issues with visual hits registering when firing at an enemy target. That's still being improved upon, which is good to hear. But overall, just the weapons, the game feels a lot smoother. It feels like it, it plays way better than it did prior. And then the NTW50. Now, I don't know why this change needed to happen. Using the NTW50, I didn't feel like I was destroying vehicles all game. So they've reduced the effectiveness of the NTW-50 against vehicles. Like I said, that is a crazy change in my opinion. The anti-material round magazine size increased to 5. I didn't find this to be true. I'll have a clip on screen. It doesn't seem like that's the case. I tried both mags that you can get with the NTW-50. And it seems like both of them are still 4. In fact, I feel like the high power one prior was 5. And now it's four and sometimes i have an issue where i reload and it only has three so i have to do it again to get that extra shot 
And then they've lowered the anti-material rounds damage multiplier against heavy vehicles. Like I said, in saying that that's an issue, you would think that the issue comes more from the vehicles themselves. And of course, the heavy rounds damage multiplier against all vehicles in general. So at this point, I think the NTW-50 is more so just a infantry weapon where if there is a vehicle that is really low health, you can hit them once, twice, and destroy it, get a couple kills in the process. Before, I didn't really think it was just an anti-vehicle weapon. I would use it primarily against infantry, and like I said, if I saw a vehicle that was low health or an issue, I would shoot at it a couple times, they'd go away, or it would blow up and I'd get some kills. So I think this change isn't necessary. I guess we'll see moving forward how they change vehicles. Maybe that'll even it out a little bit. But anyways, I appreciate you guys clicking on the video. And if you did like it, leave a like. And if you want to see more Battlefield content like this, be sure to subscribe. Anyways, later.